Let's discuss love is blind. Bitch. First of all, what the fuck? So there's gonna be some spoilers in here if you haven't seen uh, the most recent episode. Episode seven through nine. So this was an interesting string of episodes because in it, I saw so much shit, okay? So let's start off with the one that was getting on my nerves the most, Kenneth and Brittany. Kenneth, black guy, he wear his hair in twists and he paired up with a white girl. Knew she was white when they was in the pods, knew she was white when they first revealed each other, knew she was white when they got to that vacation spot. Now what happened was, there's a certain point in the vacation where all the couples meet one another and he met AD, the black girl. The only black girl that's on the show. And AD asked him some questions about raising black children with this white woman and whether or not he knew she was gonna be ready for that. Personally, I think AD was out of line asking him type of question because one, no, he don't know. Do you ever know? People can tell you something all night long. I don't mean he knows shit. He ain't gonna know till he know. But another thing is, who gives a damn girl? You don't know this Negro? And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like there was a little bit of a stirring of the pot, but whatever. We'll get to AD in a second. Kenneth, from that point on, started being very cold to Britney. Now, here's the thing about Britney. I like Britney. Britney, out of all of the girls there, has been the only one who I felt like hasn't violated. She don't act a fool. She's not annoying. She's honest. She shares her feelings in a in a way that's gentle and not in a naggy way. Like she's she's been the most cool out of all the girls. And so watching this whole thing break down kind of made me feel bad for her because I'm like, damn, she deserves better than this. So let me tell you what happens. Kenneth start getting in his head about whether or not this girl is going to be right for his family. He starts bringing up his family, like my family's going to want to know, you know, you know, who is this person and is she good for me? I, 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 and it's like, okay, I'm sure her family's going to want to know if you're good for her, like, you know, whatever. Then he just starts treating her funny. So in the beginning, he was hella giddy and like, dee -dee -dee -dee, cheesing from ear to ear, just having a blast. Um, was in the bed like, so. I want to start something off from here on out when we go to bed i want us to you know talk about today we don't go to sleep mad we debrief the whole day every night every night we do this that's what he told her in that bed laid up with his with his scarf on and his twist poking out and she was like okay okay we can do that she's you know going with it this negro the first opportunity he could invalidate her feelings and dismiss what the fuck she was talking about, that's what the fuck he did. She told him, yo, you know, I know you noticed that I really like physical touch. Like, what's your love language? She asked him that, then she's like, you know, I like physical touch so much, you could, you could touch me a little bit more. Like, you know, and he was like, oh, I felt like I was smothering you, which is crazy because we had just watched him on the boat, literally not talking to her at all until he saw some dolphins jumping out the water. He's like, oh my God, dolphins, I love dolphins. So it's like, you have not said a word to her. She even made a joke. She was like, oh my God, let's get more dolphins, please. If this is what, if this is what it's gonna take for you to like start speaking, like more dolphins, more dolphins. And so, Girl, when she told him about the physical touch, he told my son, well, I ain't never heard that before. You, you know, I've never been told that I, you know, that I'm not good with physical touch. She didn't say that you weren't good. She said that you can give her more. She, she didn't say you wasn't doing it at all. She said you could give it to her more. That's what she was saying. Okay, so that was the first time where I was like, Kenneth. That and the silent treatment, right? So then, girl, they moving into their house together, right? They got a little townhouse. And she's unpacking and she's so excited as any girl would. Like, boom, this is gonna be our home together. This is the first day of us moving into this home together. So she's unpacking and she's, you know, asking him like, what side of the closet do you want? What side of the bathroom do you want? You know, just being a giddy girl. This fool is on the phone, whole time, just texting not looking up, not really engaging. She asked me a question, he'd be like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, 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 you can, yeah, that's cool. 
sitting on the bed, slouched up, hips poking. I said, okay, now this show strike two. Actually, this show strike three, because now you pissing me off. And I hate when I'm hella giddy, giddy, bubbly, bubbly, and somebody being dry as shit. No, you need to crack a smile before I get pissed off for real. So she don't even say nothing. She just let him do what he do. She does say to him like, the hustle never stops, huh? And he was like, gotta get, gotta get, you know, my business in order, gotta get my this. Bitch, you're a principal. You are not James St. Patrick. There is not that much attention that you need to give that phone right now. Y'all will be okay, like, like it'll be okay. I thought that was so annoying, it's not even funny. Like, I hate when somebody makes their shit more important than it is, and I'm not saying that his job isn't important. What I'm saying is he was making it more important than it actually is, period. Like, bitch, please, you could take 10 to 15 minutes to unpack with this girl, or at the very least, engage with this woman while she's doing this, and you see how excited she is. Like, the way he lined himself up was like, he knew it all. Like, he was using a lot of therapy talk, a lot of talk that makes it seem like he knows what the fuck going on inside and outside the body, only for him to show that he lacks awareness and lacks emotional maturity. Yuck. So, boom. She leaves him alone. Again, more points for Britney because Britney was really showing patience and maturity because she ultimately wanted things to work with her and Kenneth, period. She took this very seriously, so she wasn't on his neck about nothing. Girl, so, so the next time we see them, they are looking at each other's places, right? So he takes her to, her, to his spot, and I don't think we ever see her take him to her spot, but we're in their, his house right now. And they're sitting on the couch and he gets back on his phone while she's talking. And he like gets off his phone. Mind you, his, he took his twist down. So I'm already tapped out. Like, you get, let me tell you something. One thing about me, and I said this before, I don't want to date no nigga in they long hair era. I don't like it. Don't like the look, won't like the look. I don't give a damn. I don't give a fuck. I just, that's me. We ain't going to be fighting for hair ties. There'd be no reason why me and you got the same damn hair do. No. So, girl, he gonna ask her, so, you know, like, checking in with her, like, so how are you feeling? How are you da 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 And she keeps it real, like, you know, I feel like you have been distant. I feel like you haven't been talking to me. I feel like, and she gave an example from the first night that they spent together in that morning when she woke up and how she was so excited and giddy and was just like, good morning. And he was just like, hey, and like roll back over. And so she had brought that up, right? This is what he gonna say. You be, yeah, but you're not gonna every morning be like that. You're not gonna be like that every time. So you have to give me grace, huh? See, this is where the Grace Warriors piss me off. This is where the Give Me Grace Warriors piss me off. Because she's giving you grace. We witnessed her giving you grace. There is many a time she could have said something to your ass, and deservingly so, and she did not. This is not a moment where you need grace. This is a moment where you hear what she's saying, and you say, you know what? And, and you just respect her feelings. Now, if you have a reason for why you were like that, share that. But you don't get to turn it into a... Because, well, you're not always going to be, you don't know what the fuck she's always going to be like. All we know is how she's been. You can't base your actions off of what you think somebody's going to be like in the future. That ain't right. You don't have no idea how this girl going to be. What if every morning she's getting to see your black ass? You don't know? I'm just like, I, 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 just, I, I hate shit like that. I hate when I see somebody really playing with somebody. That's what the fuck he was doing, playing. And the, and the wild part is, is that I think he thought he was really getting over. I think when he was saying all that, he thought we was gonna be like, he's matured. He's, man, he told her, yeah, yeah, he right, he got her to go. No, you look, you look um, rude and childish. So then, girl, the girl, and again, Brittany was handling it like, this is a man who I'm trying to work stuff out with. So she, you know, was affirming what he was saying, and she kind of was still saying what she was saying, like, you know, well, that's how I felt, and you know, ah, ah, and he was like, you know, you gotta, you got, he just kept landing on that, you gotta give me grace bullshit. So, boom, the next time we see them, he on that phone again, she in the kitchen, and she says to him, like, listen, 
I feel like, and, and we learned at that point that they had made a decision not to be um, physical with one another, that they were gonna wait. But she said, there is something to be said about that temptation and the desire and wanting to know that like you have to stop yourself. We all know what she's talking about. You want them to put it on your butt. You want to feel something, you know what I'm saying? You want to cuddle and roll around, a little slap and tickle, if you will. And so it's like, okay, when a, when a man hears that, a, a man that wants to be with you, you will hope he'd be like, the last thing I want you to think is that I don't desire you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in shape right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that, cause I do. I, I want you just as much as you want me. You know what this cloud said? Well, that's not true. I do, I do desire you. But if you're letting me know you don't desire me, thank you. What? She says she feels like that's what's missing. He just completely turned it all on her, flipped it around on her, and was stale faced the whole time. Was stale faced the whole time and was just so cold and gross. And the girl is like crying. And he don't console her at all. He gets back on his phone and then gets up and says, Let me give you a hug so you know there's no beef. No beef? Just take your legs hips body ass upstairs get your shit and get the fuck out because what do we hear when he ended up leaving he called his homeboy and was like hey bro what you want and said he was coming over there Ooh, just go girl if i could talk to britney i tell her you dodged a bullet you don't want that issue you do not want that issue that man is not the one trust me i hate people like that I hate when you tell somebody, you know, that you don't like something they did and they try to turn it around on you. Just completely, ooh, I hate, I hate that shit. Like, that's an easy way for me to talk about your ass. <laughs> like, one thing about me, I'ma talk about you. Yeah, you gonna get talked about. Cause that's ugly. You got no business treating her like that. Girl, ain't been nothing but nice to you. So, yeah, that's, and, and basically he left. That's it. Oh, I don't know if I said that. Yeah, he was like, you know, this won't work out. This isn't gonna work out, you know, clearly, you know, because you don't desire me. Big putting it on her. And it's like, boy, you wanted to do this the moment AD asked about them black kids. You have all this internalized guilt about choosing a white girl. Meanwhile, it's bullshit because you been knew she was white. You didn't have an issue with it until a black person said something to you about it, about her being white. Now all of a sudden you got all these questions. Now all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You acting like this, like you're not even real with it. It'd be one thing if you genuinely had these questions and had these reservations, but this is coming off the strength of what somebody else said to you. Like, ugh, you ugly as shit. Hate that shit. I want them to do a Love is Blind exclusively with black people. That would be, that. I mean, that would be TV gold. Okay, I do need to clean up while I'm chitting and chatting with y'all. So hold on real quick. The thing about AD and Clay is that bottom line, neither one of them are ready to be married. And so when we're having conversations about this couple, that needs to be like the preface to it. It's just like, neither one of them are actually ready for marriage. And I guess the question could be asked is like, what does ready for marriage look like? And I just think it's a, a willingness to compromise you know, showing patience, even when it's uncomfortable sometimes, giving folks the benefit of the doubt, like shit like that. Because marriage is gonna have its ups and downs and I feel like healthy marriages last because you're with someone who's committed to creating a solution with you and who's also practicing a lot of patience and understanding like this is not someone who's trying to i don't know create conflict and like you know shit like that like obviously there are marriages and relationships that are like that but i don't think i would i don't would i wouldn't consider those healthy relationships when ad and clay 
we're talking in the pods. Clay gave me the biggest icks and a lot of red flags. How he reacted when she was sharing with him the you know incident she had with the thick neck white guy who had told her the same thing he told another girl. And he just kind of like started lashing out and all of that. I was like, ugh, what a yuck moment, you know? It just showed how much of Clay's ego was involved in how he moves, you feel me? And it was very yuck, right? We all collectively were just like, look, when we saw that part. But since they've been married, AD's been the one that's kind of been giving me the ugh because I don't think she really likes this man. The way she looks at him, she be looking at him like, all I see is them lashes opening up. She be looking at him like she don't like him. She's really stale. She fishes a lot for compliments and she does it by complimenting him and I can tell that she is looking for him to say the thing to her. Like she'll be like, you're so handsome. And he just says, thank you. He never returns the compliment. And that's a reflection of his ego. That, that's a reflection of him not having that awareness to know like I should be complimenting my woman. And he does it from time to time, but it's when AD is literally putting it all out there. Like when she took that bathing suit off and all of that, like then he'll give her, I mean when she uh, took her robe down and she was in her bathing suit and she's like saying stuff, that's when he'll like kind of say something to her but i haven't seen him really dope on her it's always him kind of treating it like he's the prize and he probably really does believe that which as a woman baby you don't want the man that thinks he's the prize you're gonna be living in a world of hurt okay that is not the life i dated the guy that thought he was the prize bitch found out he was not the prize okay one thing about me the man that i'm with has to know that i am the superstar and it doesn't mean he's not a superstar and i'm not actually saying like i'm a superstar what i'm saying is he has to treat me like his whole sole purpose is to support me and, and put me up and to clap for me and to shout me out and to hold me on his shoulders and you know what I'm saying, this, that, and the third. Knowing that he's gonna get that same type of love and support and admiration from me. Um, and I just think, yeah, niggas ain't got no game no more. So they don't even know how to do that shit properly so then they can actually get that type of shit. So, boom, girl. AD and Clay's situation at this point is basically Clay got 511 jobs. I think he like owns properties and has to travel from here and there within the city. And instead of coming back to their shared apartment, he just stays at his house, which is crazy because y'all have a short amount of time to decide if y'all want to be married. And you're not using this time to actually be together. This is why I say motherfuckers ain't ready for marriage because you technically still don't know this girl like that. And you're not using the time that you've been given to know for sure whether or not you wanna get married. I would be with this motherfucker every single day if I was on this show because I would really wanna know do I want to do this? You know what I'm saying? And so the fact that he's not going home and he's staying at his house, to me, that don't make no sense. And when they were talking about this, they were having this conversation in front of his mom and sister. And his mom gave some advice about how they need to compromise and this, that, and third. And I just don't think AD is gonna be super receptive to that, knowing what Clay shared with her about how she was getting cheated on for you know, a majority of her relationship. Clay's mom was married to his dad for 23 years, and Clay shared that his dad was a serial cheater and used to take Clay on his escapades with him. That's crazy. So Clay also shared that he didn't want to disappoint AD. And in that moment, AD internalized it and was just, she felt a way about him saying that. And I didn't think that was fair. I felt like this was him sharing how he feels 
And he wasn't saying he's going to disappoint you. He didn't say he wants to disappoint you. He didn't say he thinks he's going to disappoint you. He says he doesn't want to. And because of, you know, experiences that we've had or our own biases or our own interpretations of what shit means, it turned into a whole thing where she was like, that just came out of nowhere. That just, and it's like, nothing comes out of nowhere at this stage in the game. You all literally have known each other for a week at this point and have spent the last three days together on this vacation and he's just letting you know you know this is the day before y'all go back home that he does not want to disappoint you if anything that would be like a moment of vulnerability that i would appreciate because he's not someone who she has felt like has shared with her how he feels at all times and she just had that conversation with another castmate. One of the guys had, was talking to her and randomly said like, he's really introspective and he gets in his head sometimes and he'll just stop talking. She was like, wow, that's really affirming. Like I needed to hear that. And so it's like, you know this about your man. So why would you, I don't know. I just thought that was ugly. So I'm not saying I'm team Clay or anything like that. I'm just saying both of them have shown me signs of not being ready for this big thing that they signed up for. Okay, so next, Megan Fox and Jimmy. <laughs> so Chelsea, bottom line, gets on my nerves. Can't stand Chelsea. I told y'all in the last vlog, Chelsea is insufferable. We'll find a reason to be upset about something. You could be having the best day ever and she'll be like, Except remember two years ago when you said that no girl. Why are you bringing that up? Why why she brings shit up when it's not necessary they could and I hate people like that It's like we go through something we apologize we move forward Only for you to rehash it whenever you're feeling like you're questioning stuff. Don't bring up old shit old wounds you know she never allows things to just heal and move forward it's always her like rehashing something like bitch do you want this shit to work because why the hell you keep bringing up this shit and then she brings it up in front of people this is my issue with chelsea and my issue with people who do this period you don't do that to your people you don't bring up grievances that y'all have had private conversations that y'all have had or situations where it makes the other person not look that great in front of people that that to me is like, oh, you don't really fuck with this person or you don't give a fuck about how they look. You want, you want people to feel sorry for you. That's why you're doing this. Because why would you tell your homegirls that he hasn't kissed me all day and he saw the other girl who he liked, he saw her page today, you know, stirring all this up right before they meet him. Okay, then they meet him. He has nothing but nice things to say about your friends. Later on that night, they're kind of like debriefing the day. And she's like being her naggy, needy self, talking about some, I, you know, I just feel like, you know, you, you don't know, like, what's going on? Like, you didn't kiss me today. And he's like, I did kiss you today. He gave very specific moments where he kissed her. Like, I kissed you in the bathroom before I left. I kissed you right here before your friends got here. Like, I kissed you. And so she was like, yeah, well, like, you didn't say I love you. Now it's something else. First I didn't kiss you, now I didn't say I love you. So then he's like, yo. And I, you can see it, like, it, it went down because he was on a high, it was good. They were laughing, they were giggling. She got on the velvet shirt. Everything was fine, right? Besides that shirt. And here she go bringing the mood down because I think she's one of those people that can't accept that everything's good. She is addicted to conflict and addicted to whining and being a victim and someone having to make her feel better and like rub her back. Like she constantly needs that type of interaction. That's what it seems like, that's how it comes off. And so, he says to her like, yo, I feel like you've been a little clingy. That was the worst thing she could have heard. Because you know what that does? That fulfills her vision of what he thinks about her anyway. She is severely insecure. And she projects this insecurity by creating this conflict with him unnecessarily. So, you know, 
boom. In the same way that Kenneth wanted Brittany to dump him so it could be off his hands and he could say she loved me, she said she don't desire me, even though he had set it up so then she would want to leave because who the fuck would want to be with somebody who don't speak, don't touch me, always on their phone, not engaged with me, acting distant, like you set it up this way. So here she go, being fucking annoying as shit, and then feels insulted and doesn't understand why he's calling her clingy. What the fuck do you mean? Every single day, every time we see you on the screen, you're asking him, does he really like you? Does he really love you? Are you happy with your decision? What do you think about me? Are you sure? Are you constantly? That shit is a drag. And so when he said she was clingy, I wanted to give him a standing ovation. Like, yes, let's shake this shit up because at the end of the day, she is being fucking clingy and you know, and tried to be nice and appease her and she's still not she's not getting it so yes it's time for us to like let it be known what time it is and what time it's not tells her she's clingy right i i could tell she was about to rip that velvet shirt off hulk style she got pissed clingy fucking clingy that's what you're gonna say to me you think i'm fucking clingy how I just want to say, bitch, how about this? And this time, not talk that like we got a list, there's a laundry list of moments where you've been clingy, ho. Don't ask nobody how, because we can give you a how. So she starts getting mad. She's like, I don't want to hear from you right now. Like he's trying to talk to her. She's like, I'm not done talking. You know, she starts acting a fool, um, being rude and just being yuck. So he's just taking it. And then he's just like, <laughs> this this is where he says something he shouldn't have said. He said, uh, <laughs> Like, even today, like, you know, you, oh, she was like, I'm fucking clingy. Was I clingy when I fucking cooked you this and cooked you that and had sex with you before so-and-so? And he was like, well, that was your idea to have sex. We could back up off that as well. Now you're going to tell her she ain't got good coochie. Uh, and now, now you have took it too far, Jimmy. I said, Jimmy, you know good and well. I call him Beetlejuice because he look like Beetlejuice me. I said, Beetlejuice, you know good and well. You do not need to. Why would you say this to this girl? Because now when I tell you she going to think about that for the rest of her damn life, that he don't want to have sex with her, but she's going to bring it up all the time. And what does she do? Brings it up all the time. She meets his friends because they end up, he, go, he ends up spending the night at his, at his own house that night and then they end up rewinking in the morning they apologize make up whatever so this is the day where she's gonna meet his homegirls two of his homegirls and what does she do she brings that whole argument up brings the whole argument up in front of his homegirls tells them exactly what he said about her being clingy and also about not wanting to have sex and it's like you are the worst she's just the worst I, like she's the worst so my prediction for them two I don't know like the thing is, is that Jimmy actually gives me the the idea that he actually likes this girl and she be acting so insecure and it really doesn't have anything to do with Jimmy it has everything to do with Jess the girl who he was talking to and that he almost proposed to she's just in her head about that and it's like get over it girl get over it he chose you so it's time to move forward. And he told you that he's happy with his decision. You got to believe what he said and move forward. If he gives you a reason not to believe it, then address it. But until then, back up off it. You going to make, you going to push him to that other bitch. So, boom. Let's get to Laura and Jeremy. So, Jeremy, I haven't liked him from the jump. He's just one of those white guys that play too much. Like, I hate a guy that don't know when to quit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Stop playing, cause now I'm now I'm annoyed, right? And also you're becoming ugly to me. So it's like stop. So he don't know when to stop. Boom. Laura, she's also annoying. Laura just gives. I like to be in charge. I'm used to being in charge, and she doesn't. I don't think she respects Jeremy. She doesn't give that. She kind of treats him like he's a joke. And. She be nitpicking off shit. I don't like that either. She's, she, from the beginning, before, even outside of the guys, when they was in the house, she just be overstepping. So, Laura's not my favorite. But, in this situation, Laura done caught him up. There isn't much to talk about with Laura and Jimmy. I'm gonna be honest with you, like, I'm not that 
invested in their love story or the strawberry blonde and the puerto rican girl i couldn't tell you that I, well i can't we'll talk about them but i'll be skipping their parts let me be honest with you. I, 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 I. so as far as laura and jeremy jeremy um had connected with another girl in the pods and basically long story short decided to meet the girl and because when they are on that vacation they don't have their phones once they go home from the vacation, they get their phones back. And the producers know what they're doing, you know what I'm saying? So they get their phones back when they go back home. And the girl that he had connected with had DM'd him. And instead of him not responding, he hearted what she said. And basically what she was saying in the message was like, if you change your mind, if there's any chance of you reconnecting with me, I'm available. And he hearted it and Laura was like, what the fuck? Which, she has the right to be like, what the fuck? Cause yeah, bitch, what the fuck? Why is you hearting that? You should not respond to that at all because it, it insinuates that you have space for her or that that's something that you'll look into. You don't do that. So long story short, girl, they had shared their location with one another and Jeremy got caught up lying, talking about, you know, he was at one spot when he was someplace else and he was chitting and chatting with the girl and so laura's pissed but the thing about it is like laura you don't like this man no ways girl just go ahead who gives a damn if he was there like for real who gives a damn because you know you don't even like him that's my thing like can we not play this game you don't like this man so let's drop him completely it's it's literally pointless we'll see what happens though now, as far as the Puerto Rican girl and the strawberry blonde guy, he's really annoying to me as well. Like, very annoying. He, I saw him say, guess what, chicken butt? Like, that's, that's the type of stuff that made me be like, cut the cameras. I want off the show, okay? I'm not, I can't do this. I ain't gonna be able to do it. Yeah, I, I would be done. But his issue is, he don't want no kids right now and she's not on birth control. And he keeps bringing up the fact that every woman who he's been with has been on birth control, so he hasn't had to worry about children. As if birth control is an automatic, this means we ain't gonna get pregnant. No, people be getting pregnant even though they on birth control. And so she tells him like, I've never been on birth control, I don't wanna take birth control because I don't wanna disrupt my body, fair. And he's just like, you know, I no, yeah, I'm not saying that you have to, I'm just saying like, you know, I've never, you know, you know, I just, I, I don't wanna, he just, you know, keeps bringing that up. And it's like, okay, why, to me, it's just like, why is this still a conversation? Put on a fucking condom and call it a day. Pull out, like, how about that? How about pull out? Like, we're grown. What, what is this conversation? Her thing is, if we get pregnant, we get pregnant. And his thing is, ain't no, if we get pregnant, I don't want to be pregnant. So, yeah, it's just, these are important conversations though to have because you see she's she's ready for something that he's not ready for at all. And that can make or break a relationship. So we'll see where that goes. I'm still gonna be skipping the dialogue because I don't care. But yeah, I think I think when it comes to marriage, A D is gonna say no, Clay is gonna say yes. I think or they might both say yes. I get I get the vibe they're either both gonna say yes, or if anyone says no, it's going to be AD. That's what I think. With Jimmy and Chelsea, I think they're both gonna say yes. I don't think Laura and um, that man even make it to the altar. Laura and Jeremy, I don't think they make it to the altar. Who else? Oh, the strawberry blonde in them. I, I guess they'll say yes. 